Hello, it's Hazel. Hi, it's Azura. It's Jermaine. And it's Iman. Welcome Yay. back to Cleverties. And this is part two of this episode. What we want versus what our parents want. I want chicken rice. Oh, I'm hungry. Want mee siam. <laughs> <laughs> and we got mee siam today. Oh, okay, very good. See me show. Honestly, right? When when you're talking about the family thing, mm. I kind of like realized that when I went into family um, like gatherings or something, mm. like that, I would actually feel quite nervous. <gasps> oh, because of the questions they would ask. Because would they? they but because ask. of course, people will ask like, "Oh, how are you, Iman?" Or like, mm. "What are you doing now?" Yeah. And that was the question I was actually kind of afraid of when mm. I was younger, because mm. I'll always be like, "Uh, modeling." Uh, school mm. but then I knew like if I was still schooling and yeah. I still am yeah. and also like I have a backing that would get me support yeah. mm. that's why I always felt like I needed a supportive like background right. which is my psychology because right. they'll be more interested in that mm. you know because I felt like if I did modeling they'll be like mm, okay yeah. oh still uh. Uh-huh. Oh, you know, would not. Or like, yeah. uh, or like they they wouldn't understand that it's something that is fun that yeah. I like to do right. but of course with my mom um, they will understand that, but still, I felt like, mm. is that not enough? Right, right. like that yeah. pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm like, okay, I'm still a psychology, getting my degree. Right. I'm doing right. this, this, this. Oh, I'm also doing music. Right. Or, or I'm doing right. You but feel like you have to. You have justify to justify yourself. You know. But it's smart though. If there's one thing that Iman taught us today, I think it's to get a degree, so oh. you can get away with <laughs> anything else that you like to do. What is this, sir? Uh? You're what? like, <laughs> no, but also probably when you're young or even when you like now, whatever mm. age you are is to try things that you want to do. Because mm. I did uh, boxing. Oh. I did Brazilian oh. jiu-jitsu. I did taekwondo. All those funny, weird, weird things. I wanted to do, like... Because I wanted to be like, hey, I can defend myself. Yeah, right. don't fight Iman. <laughs> is there anything that this girl can't do? Hmm. I cannot eat sushi. Okay, okay. <laughs> I feel a bit better. I feel a bit better. Well, as in you don't like it? I don't like it. Okay. okay. Uh, but yeah. if it were entirely up to you, would you pursue a degree? Like, let's say if Well, that's you, a good question. Yeah, you didn't yeah. have to care about anyone's expectations. Mm. Yes, I would get a degree because, I mean, honestly, psychology has been something I've been very interested in. Oh, but nice. I'm a not... St- I, I hate studying. Mm. I like listening and learning new things, yeah, but I yeah. hate studying. Right. Don't you have to remember a lot of things for psychology? Mm. Mm. But then I realized, like... Because initially I was also thinking, oh, do mm. I go into business? Mm. Or do I go into, like, mass comm? Mm. And then I was thinking, with everything that I've tried out in my life that were hobbies, that right. were trial and error kind mm. of things, I realized that mass comm was something that I felt I could do. Mm. Like, even without studying? Even without right. studying. Right. And then business... I didn't know what I was going to do with business, you know, I'm just going to use my street smart (laughs) kind of thing, you know what I mean? And then psychology, wow, Mm. you don't know anything about it, Mm -hmm. you can apply it to your daily life, you talk to your friends all the time Mm. that come to you about problems, you can help them. It's fascinating. (laughs) And then, yeah, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would always think about having a degree, although it wasn't, it wouldn't have been my first decision, because I would have just been like, yeah, I'm going to do this, yeah. I'm gonna do that. Mm. But then my dad was like, You're still studying? And I'm like, Yes, I am. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. really, really nice. But you know, a, a lot of families, I guess, um, where the children are expected to go into a certain field, right? Mm. I feel like that's more for the parents' happiness than mm. for the child's happiness. I think it's also so that the parents know that the the kids will be okay. Yeah. If anything mm. were to happen, I think yeah. it's also to know, like, okay, my child has a good stable job is studying a good field that can support like his or her entire life you know I think yeah. that's why parents maybe it's like the Asian culture so that that's like okay I need you to be in a stable family mm. so you can raise your kids mm. so you don't have to worry about mm. whatever they thought they had to worry about yeah. when they were younger mm. it's true I think both 80 Exactly. Yeah. Coming from my parents point of view they are very traditional mm. I think they always uh, would ask themselves this question if I am gone the next day. Yeah. Can my child survive, survive for himself or yeah. herself? Wait, your parents ask you this question? No lah, no lah. Oh. <laughs> you no, know, when we have like talks, yeah. I can tell that. Uh, mm. That's what they think, right? I've yeah. never thought that. That makes mm. me sad. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But mm. because they really want me to be able to to sustain like yeah. a good, comfortable to survive, life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to survive in yeah. Singapore at that. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess, you know, sometimes we do things to make them feel more secure and more comfortable. Mm. And also mm. I think 
if we do want to try new things, we have to show them that, like, hey, I'm serious about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I can do it. Hey, other people are doing it and they support me, you yeah. know? And I think, like, with me also coming into the music industry, I, I kind of hid it from my family yeah. for a little bit mm. because I also wanted to kind of, like, wrap it up nicely and give mm. it to them in a box yeah. and, like, hey, mm-hmm. this is it. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind yeah. of thing. And she's right, yeah. you know, because mm. I feel like after I came back, right, and said, hey, I'm not doing this. <laughs> oh, how do your mom take that? And not you? very well. <gasps> no. um, for a while, not very well. But eventually, when she saw that, yeah, actually, she's doing okay. Mm. And then she accepted it. Oh. Yeah, so I agree with mom on that. Mm. You know, like, yeah. you have to be serious. Like, you have to yeah. see that this is viable. Like, oh, mm. you can do this, you know? Mm. And I also think they get... M- a bit more scared as you get older Mm -hmm. because maybe when you're young they're like okay now you can try this you can try that you can you can change if you want to you know you don't have to do this anymore but then as you start to get older they probably get a bit more serious because Mm. they're like okay you need to choose a school now you need to choose a this and that and i was the the kid in the school that kind of like didn't know what i wanted to do you know everybody after like o levels or psle they'll be like what score did you get i was like i passed so i'm fine <laughs> you know what i mean like like i think yeah also maybe the system about ranking even right. in classes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i yeah. think that was like the express yeah. you know all that yeah. kind of thing um it probably affects a lot of children mm, now does. and yeah. and even like the college and poly and ite everybody like says oh if you go to ITE oh that means you got like, oh, bad oh grades ITE is the end right that's what yeah. people say but yeah. honestly oh, ITE not. has great what they call programs yeah. and yeah. things like that so sometimes I'm like why why have the comparison when everybody's just trying to do their best mm-hmm. you know everybody's not the same yeah. exactly mm. so let me yeah. ask you mm. this okay if you could choose right would y'all choose being book smart or street smart. Street smart. Street Didn't smart. Did you do this on the yeah, show? Yeah, I just did this on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be apps. Street smart. Street, street smart. smart. Wow. Yeah. Because but what about you? Um, honestly, book smart is easier. Then you don't have to study. Like it just comes to you naturally, right? But then, if you street smart, you can also just listen. And if you remember in your own way, <laughs> yeah. then you can also. <laughs> no. yeah. But I don't know. This is kind of the the thing I think about, like the book smart versus street smart kind of thing you can be book smart but can mm. you apply it mm. if you're street Let's smart go. true you can innovate yourself you can kind of like become a chameleon in your environment yeah. right you know i think yeah. a lot of some well not a lot but some people who are maybe book smart or like even like some of my friends they don't mm. know how to apply it mm. yeah, yeah apply because mm. I think even the schools teach so much, like, you must do math this yeah. way, you must write your English this way. I'm dyslexic, so when I was doing my mm. math, I knew the answer, mm. but my workings would kind of be a bit different. Okay. Mm. And they wouldn't, they would say, Iman, this is wrong. Yeah. But right. then I'm like, but I got the answer. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And that was, like, kind of frustrating to yeah. me, because I was like, mm. why can't everybody, if you get the same result, yeah. if you can do it, if mm. you can apply it to your yeah. life. Mm. Why not? Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think the unfortunate thing is that because of parental expectations, mm. right, on you to be like academically mm. very like good grades, anything yeah. less than eighty, you get caning or whatever. <laughs> it happens. It still happens till this day. Yeah, mm. yeah. it's yeah. like you bring yeah. home a exam paper, right? Yeah. And you get like ninety five, for example, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and your parents go. What's the five marks left? Oh no! <laughs> That's very. I'll be so happy, you know. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, if my child gets above fifty and pass, I'll be like, I was sure of you. I was sure of you. Whatever you want, as long as you pass and you tried your best. Yeah. Well, I mean, your That's kids are gonna be very you know, lucky. Yes. Yeah. But a lot of I think Singaporean kids, right, mm. face depression, face mm. anxiety mm. because of all this pressure from their parents yeah. to be who their parents want them to be. Mm. Yeah, and I also think. I mean, living in Singapore is not easy. Yeah, it's you not. know, I feel like there's so everybody's trying to up one each other, and yeah. not maybe not just Singapore, but just the whole social environment yeah. right now, especially yeah. with social media. Mm. Yeah, everybody's trying to. Oh, she did this. Okay, I must do it better. Or, or he got better grades. Okay, I must try and meet meet that. You know, mm. and I don't like it. Yeah. But what can you do about it? Side note, on social media, people only show you what they want you to see. Mm. The best parts. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you don't really know what's happening in 
somebody's life. Yeah. All you see is a nice picture. Yeah. Mm. You know. But, but everybody know has going problems. To. Yeah. yeah. Right? Exactly. Everybody has problems with exactly. things that they need. But to as do. someone studying psychology, do you study about like um, the rates of mental illness in Singapore? Not just Singapore, but we do learn a bit of like stats mm. in like the US and in the UK and all that, all that kind of things and um, I don't exactly know the numbers but I know they're high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's definitely been on an increase yeah. Kind oh, of yeah, situation. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. like compared to how things were before um, before like social media especially and before like so much comparison um, it's definitely increased. And I'm actually writing my dissertation, which is mm. a 10,000 words, mm. on um, the association of social media yeah. with social comparison, active and passive social media usage, mm. and mm. happiness levels. Wow. And we found that those passive social media users... Yeah. Pass, um, so active is like you post, you mm. comment, you post pictures and all right. that but passive means you're just scrolling mm. you're looking okay, okay. Mm. and we found that those who scroll more mm. and are passive users actually have um higher social comparison and higher uh, levels i mean and lower levels of happiness <gasps> Oh, because whoa! Um, I, let me guess, they're not confident enough about themselves to post. Yeah, because oh, those who are oh active have a, I don't know, have a higher self-esteem of yeah, themselves yeah, to yeah. post. And like, I think also when you're posting and you're so active, you don't try to care about other right, people because right. you're trying to look at yourself. That's yeah. actually true. You know? mm. Whereas when you're passive, you're looking through so many different right. bodies and faces and right. people doing different things. Where and you become like, more oh, drained. This person has mm. this. This person yeah. has that. They're doing this. They're doing yeah. that. It really kind of like screws you start with comparing. your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. actually, this because I had a hypothesis where mm. you're like, okay, if you're more active, that mm. means you're you're more likely to social compare yeah. yourself, you know? Yeah. Right. And people would just think that, oh, you're so active on social media, that means you're looking at so many things. Right. Mm. But the passive ones, the ones yeah. that are hiding, wow. actually might be oh my more yeah, anxious. Yeah, don't very much. Like, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 not, no, you're very confident, babe. No worry. You can laugh. No problem. Yeah, yeah, I think no she's problem. Fine. Yeah, she's fine. But I mean, it was just an yeah. interesting, cool statistic that me yeah. and my uh, psychology teacher... Um, like mm. found out we were oh. like whoa he was even shocked at the results yeah. mm. but that just goes to show that you don't know what's happening yeah. mm. okay yeah. fascinating yeah on that note of uh, unhappiness right, right are there any stories that you have heard of or your friends stories that you have um, heard from them uh, where they followed their parents choices for them in life oh. and they were upset about it do you have friends like that? I don't think I had a story, but I, mm. I, I probably heard somewhere, maybe from a friend, but I cannot remember like mm. exact things. Okay. But it's, yeah, they follow in their parents' mm. footsteps. They want, or like take over family business or become a doctor and all that kind of things. Mm. And then they're not happy. Yeah. They drop out. They stop. Oh. And then... Wow. Got balls, huh? <laughs> but then they, then they become lost. Okay. Mm. And then after that, they try and go into whatever they want to, and then mm. it works. Okay. Mm. And they become happy. Mm. Because you finally have a purpose of doing something instead of, oh, I gotta go to work again just because. Mm. Right. That's true, that's true. Mm. That's true. Yeah. And you know, there's something that um, I, I like to say, and I wish more people would sort of think about, you know, mm-hmm. which is obviously. Especially in Singapore, every parent wants their kid to excel academically. And we know that studies are important, you know. For sure. But I wish that they would realise that giving your child a skill is so important as well. Yeah. Especially the earlier, the better. Mm-hmm. Because that is setting them up for the future as well. Mm. A lot of people, they think that, oh, you just have to excel in school, right? Yeah. You just have to do well and you'll be fine. Because and you'll live your life. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But there are so many people that we see around us who their skills are feeding them now. Yep. And actually, people pay you more for your skills. Mm. <laughs> so I have yeah. a friend, True, you know. she's a preschool teacher and mm. she told me that, did you know that kids from the age of three to six, their brain actually develops three times. <gasps> yeah. Wow. yeah. So a lot of parents, they actually choose to send their kids to enrichment classes, mm. uh, music classes, whatever, you know, because uh, at a, from three to six, right, mm. their brain develops faster. Mm. So when they enter primary school, the parents can chillax. 
you know, oh. take a step back because oh. whatever that they can do for the kid, they yeah. have already done so. That's why, yeah, I, I never knew that. So that's why more people choose to invest in a better preschools, mm. you know, make their child learn more stuff. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Very good but advice. Then, yeah. But then does that mean they, they chill back and they stop? When they get older, like after they're six years old, six and above, mm. then they like stop. I guess, I guess these are for parents who don't really want to force their kids too Anyone. much. Oh, yeah, right. but uh, from a young age, as parents, they should make the right, maybe to them, they should be making the right choice for their kids by sending them to more enrichment classes. So it opens up the kids' options in future. It's true, oh, yeah. Right. And I think when your child gets to a certain age, mm. by letting them decide what they want to pursue, mm. you're also helping them think for themselves yeah. like Hazel said if the next day the parent is gone yeah. and all the child knows is what the parent wants yeah. who's gonna guide and lead them yeah. Yeah. right it's so yeah. sad yeah. feel lost too um, but some parents I guess also meddle in not just career but relationships <laughs> oh friendships what you wearing Hazel Mimi yeah. cannot wear <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, actually you know I have a friend um, mm. I, I Okay, let's not name her. Okay, okay, uh, okay. She's, a, she's a good friend of mine. When she was in uni, she brought her... Uh, my friend brought her boyfriend home, right? To mm. meet the parents. And then I remember she told me her mom asked her, why is this guy only a second upper? What is why second is upper? He? So in uni, like, we degree. have the degree, like the second lower, second upper. And then, of course, the best is first class. Mm. So the mom was asking her, why is he not a first class honours? Oh. How to answer? Yeah, exactly. And, and my friend was just so shocked. And um, I think the mom really wants the best for her. She meddles in her relationship, uh, the way she dresses. I think her mom would tell her things like, you wear this, uh, you really look like prostitute. <gasps> and my friend would be so affected. You know, she's a happy bubbly girl. But whenever it comes to outfits, she will always send me and say, uh, babe, do you think this is too much? Do because you think that too anything much? that she wants to wear, she'll be like, what will my mother say? Yeah. And she's not the kind uh, who will wrap herself up and then go out and change into whatever she wants. Uh, she yeah. really cares about what her mother thinks. Mm. Yeah, and her mom wants her to excel academically. To me, she's a very creative, artsy kind of person. Mm. But she chose to take engineering. Mm. I don't know. She's uh, doing a job in engineering now. She but happy? I'm not sure if she's the happiest. I mean, she's performing well. Uh, she can excel in like whatever she does. But I really do think she'll be better off writing scripts, writing novels, mm. acting in shows. Mm. She can sing so well, you know. I just think about all the wasted potential yeah. Yeah. in people that chose a track that they, exactly. you know, exactly. they weren't passionate but about. I do feel we cannot fault her mother. Uh, Okay. Her words are a bit harsh, but her intentions are always the best for the yeah. daughter. I mean, so that's the hard part. Yeah, and sometimes, I mean, I don't know if this happens, but mm. I feel like it does also. Like when you listen to your parents, when especially when you don't know what to do and you're mm. lost, yeah. you know, when you listen to your parents and then maybe you're finally doing something, you start to appreciate like, oh, actually thank my mom and dad right. For, right. for letting me like push me and choose mm. for me to do this because now I finally know what I want, I need to do. Mm. You know, I, I think some kids right now are also a bit lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's also when you need to kind of like give them like different seeds basically yeah. and see which one they want to plant. Mm. Wow, that's a great wow. metaphor. Wow. <laughs> and mine, 2021. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Did any one of you actually face struggles when you were choosing this career that you wanted to do um, and your parents, you know, kind of tried to stop you or were not supportive? No, I was very sure what I wanted to do. Yeah. Since she was 14 at McDonald's. Yes. At McDonald's, <laughs> when I was making fries, man. So yeah. I think personally for me, <clears throat> so my dad has a family business. Right. Never once since I was born up until maybe two years ago, mm. did he ever say, I want you in the family business. So to me, it's oh. like, oh, I'm free to do whatever I want now right. because How I'm I not expected. Because my brother, you know, my older brother, traditionally, right. he is going to be in the business. Yeah. That is, and his path was set up for him. He kind of had no choice, right? Oh, so damn. to me, I was like, okay, yeah. I do whatever. I go be radio DJ. <laughs> <laughs> and it was only up until very recently mm. that he, he actually told me like, Barbie? Yeah, Barbie. That's what he calls me. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Not Barbie, yeah. Barbie. <laughs> yeah. He would prefer that I was in the family business than working in the entertainment industry. Mm. How do you feel? Mm, I feel a bit sad la, mm. because I, I actually told him, I said, but you never told me this once growing up. Right. If you had told me, I would have gone to business, I would have prepared myself. Yeah. Really? I had zero business really? experience. Really? You do that? Because at one point, I was like, mm, what should I really do? Right. And if I had known this, oh. I would have gone to business. Mm. 
Yeah. yeah, it's not something that I'm not interested in. It's right. just that I found okay. something way more fun to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of the day, he will let me choose still. But now I know that there is this expectation, yeah. right? And it kind of changes, like, it changes how I perceive my future completely. Hmm. Hmm. But then I also think, like, now at least you're doing something that you love and that you enjoy. And I feel like studies and, you know, whatever you want to try out, like, mm. uh, you know, you want to get a diploma in mm. and all that kind of thing. Studies can always come whenever, yeah. Yeah. whatever yeah. age. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't have the physical strength to be in sports your entire life. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so do that. Yeah, well, true. studies will you will always be there, no matter mm. what age you are, no mm. matter where you are. So, like, I- imagine if now, like, you're doing your your hostings and your radio mm. DJs, mm-hmm. and you find it so fun, and maybe one day you get like a bit, I wouldn't say tired, but you're just like, hmm, I I feel like maybe getting into the family business. Then you can slowly start studying yeah. and get into it whenever you want. You yeah. know, whenever you're ready. Whenever yeah. you're ready, yeah. But, but the question is, would you let go of your DJ job? Then she can do to a run the family podcast. <laughs> yeah, then you do hot, hot podcast every day. Yeah. <laughs> no, you You're do hire business, me. You do a business DJ. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, you fuse it together. I don't go to competitor. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys would think that you know, oh, you know, these hot podcast hosts, they probably have their life together. They know what they're gonna do. Sorry, but <laughs> the answer is no. We are just as lost as some of you guys. Mm. Yeah, and we're just human. You know. Yeah. We are in our twenties, and that's right. It's it's like far from what you're gonna achieve in life. Yes. Mm. Yeah, we never know where life's gonna take us. Exactly. You know? yeah. But I'm really glad for you guys that your parents, you know, support you wholeheartedly. It's not that my parents don't. It's just that they have expectations. There's an expectation. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like no matter what, behind every parent, I mean, behind every parent's like thinking, there mm. will always be some sort of expectation. Mm, that's because true. imagine if you had a baby. Mm. Mm. I mean, okay, all of us gonna have babies. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then. I mean, they grow up yeah. and they do something, and then you'll be a bit like, oh, you'll be, huh, yeah, yeah. I kind of wanted you to do this, but okay. If your kid came to you right and said, "Mommy, mommy, I want to be a TikToker," huh? Uh, Why are all the faces <laughs> zoom in, zoom in? Um, <laughs> what would your What would you say to your um, hypothetical child? Okay, okay. Tola, tola, tola. okay honestly, you <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I will let him or her try. Because yeah. look at, yeah. uh, what's that girl called? Charlie DiMaggio. Oh! Right? I mean, she made it. Yeah. Renegade. Renegade. But, it, but it's Renegade. hard. It's hard. Hey, it's not a lot of people. Is that frame got TikTok dance or not? No, because I didn't know if people would do it or not. We so created it. We created it. We, we do it. Okay. Okay. Time frame, baby. Time frame, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, we can't be hypocrites and say that oh, exactly. our parents shouldn't dictate what we do. Then yeah. we go and dictate what yeah. our children correct, do, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 So, okay, if okay. all of us were to have children, okay. what type of parent would you be? I'll be the type that allows my child to, to do anything. jump in the mud and ah, climb ah, the tree. Ah. I want to do that, yeah. you know. <laughs> mm. That's right. I miss those times. Exactly. Mm. When you so, were climbing in the tree? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, now people well, don't do that. I'm like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I never did that. <laughs> It was so fun. Okay. You should. I should try. Oh, my parents wouldn't outside, let me yeah. jump in the mud as well. There was one time I was riding my uh, tricycle right. and then I went to like the, the, the top of my HDB staircase. Mm. Just eight steps. And then I thought of the Olympics, right? <laughs> so I took Sorry. in the breath. Oh, no. <laughs> and I went down. Like, down like, boom, 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 boom. And then what? My father hit me. Oh, no. <laughs> my father hit me for being naughty instead of caring about me like, hey, you okay or not? Because I, I was like bleeding here, there, everywhere. Oh, right. But yeah, that was a good experience because I never did it again, right? Okay, so I think sometimes right. yeah, 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 we yeah, learn from true. experience. So this yeah. is Correct. what I want to be as a parent for my child as well. Correct. Because I feel like mm. sometimes parents, they know that it's a mistake, right? And they yeah. want to jump in right away mm-hmm. and save you. But I think sometimes some mistakes you just have to make for yourself. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You can't true. protect your child forever, you know? Correct. You let them experience some hardship, mm. some heartbreak, yeah. mm. and that makes them the person that they are. But yeah. then, like, with this, now I'm just thinking also, like, I don't know, maybe it's just an Asian culture. Mm. And I feel like it is because mm. I personally feel that sometimes when I go through things, mm. it's also a bit harder to talk to my parents about it. Oh, 100%. I don't tell my parents about my troubles, actually. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I, if I think about it, like, I don't. Although sometimes, yeah. like, maybe my mom, like, oh, you look so gloomy today. I'm like, <laughs> it's the way I woke up. <laughs> I can't tell if that's an impression of her mother or her mother really sounds like oh, that. No, no, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, um, it's true. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like, hard to communicate with them. My, com- my, my dad actually told me the reason why he doesn't know how to communicate mm. is because he grew up in a family of 12, 14. Yeah, 12 or 14. I don't know. Many, many <laughs> children. And his parents never had time to communicate mm, with them. Right. Oh. So they were left to fend for themselves, right. kind of. Yeah. And because of that, he doesn't really know how, how, to, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. how to then like, pass that down. When I look at my boyfriend's um, family, mm. he talks to his mom about like, problems or things right. or, or like even like oh what's he doing and calls his mom and like oh. love you like all the time right. and then when he was like when he we met and yeah. like you know we like started like dating he was like mom can you show a bit more emotion <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh i'm not <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but right. you know what i mean yeah. it, it's hard for me to show emotion yeah. because yeah. It's not something that we receive on yeah. a daily. Yeah. So after all that we've discussed today, right, about parental expectations, let's say we've got a listener right now mm-hmm. and they're going through that where mm-hmm. their parents want them to be a certain person, go into a certain line. What would you want to tell that that listener? Do what you want to do. <laughs> Okay, no, okay, honestly, have studies as a backup because I am actually quite grateful mm. that I have a backup plan and yeah. that has always been something that I felt like I needed also. It because makes you feel safer as well. It right? makes me feel yeah. safer and also like, oh, if I really cannot do this and I tried it and it doesn't work out, at mm. least I have a backup plan. I mm. feel like studies or, you know, just a little bit of education that mm. you know you enjoy also. Like, yeah. don't go into engineering if you don't want to. Mm. Go, get into business or psychology or whatever it is. Mass comm. But go into something that you want to. Yeah. Also, figure out and try out different things that you want to do Mm because when i was going into music or dance or being an athlete i was also like oh should i do this or not but Mm. it was in me it was in my mind all the time so i just took that risk Mm -hmm. to do it because i was like if i'm young i mean older i don't think i'm gonna have the time to look back and be like damn like i should have done that Mm. yeah so don't regret anything just do what you want to do especially when you're very young right now do those kids that are even if you're not just do whatever you want to do yeah, take risks yeah, yeah. Take yeah. Risk. life is all about yeah Jesus. enjoy it mm. what I think about you it is hard la. definitely you must strike a balance between your own interests and mm. your parents mm. so i'm gonna say if your parents really want you to go for a degree i think you can consider that but mm-hmm. like what Iman said, actually do something that you like. Take a degree mm-hmm. in something that you mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. And after you have that degree, you set their hearts at ease. Go and pursue what you want for yourself. Yeah, I think this is mm-hmm. this may take a little more time, but mm-hmm. it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. And also mm-hmm. if you want to do something that's kind of like clashing with the time, you must also know how you're going to manage your time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you must be ready to be like, hey, these things might clash with my studies. So mm. in between, find time. Like after this, I got to do some school assignments. Mm. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's the discipline. Yeah, well. discipline. Yeah. Time management. Time management. Mm. What about you, Azura? What's mm. your advice? I like this conversation. But for me, right? Um, okay. A couple of things, yeah. So I do agree with both of them. And I feel like, you know, sometimes we think like, ah, oh, my parents don't understand me. Or like, why are they making me do this and that? But we also know now that we're older, Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's always from a good place. That, you know, when they had us, they didn't have a manual. They they had to trying everything out for the first time as well. So we're a bit more understanding Mm -hmm. now, huh? And last time we're like, no! (laughs) Right? (laughs) But I'm also the sort of person who I don't take no for an answer. Right. Mm. I didn't give my mother a very easy time, let me tell you this, Mm. okay? (laughs) Naughty child. <laughs> no, no, not naughty. Oh. Just very strong-headed. Okay, okay. Mm, mm, mm. I, I argued about everything because... Oh, God bless her. <laughs> Have I ever told you about the signature story? Huh? Okay, you know when you were in school, right? Uh, and oh, the... your teacher would ask you to get your parents' signature. Right. So yeah. whenever I didn't do very well, which also means 90 lah, huh? Okay? Huh? Ah. Wow, I cannot even get 90, you know. <laughs> wow. I don't even get 90 marks. Yeah. Yeah. Low 90, you 88, you 87, my mother. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Okay, so you forge okay. your signature. No, 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 never. Because <gasps> okay. I'm not oh. that sort. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Harsh podcast listeners, never forge your parents' never signature. It's just yeah. not worth it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> really? I, so I don't like lying, you see, because okay. it's just trouble, right? Mm. So I really rather tell you and then fight about it and still get my way. <laughs> that was my way. Oh. <laughs> So what did you fight okay, with Okay, so I was maybe eight or nine at that time and I didn't meet her score expectations. Mm. So I don't know if any of your parents have ever said this, but they'll say, I don't want to sign. 
Have you heard this before? No. No, my no. parents have never said that. Wait, they don't want to sign a paper because of your marks? Yeah, like, so if they're not happy, right? And then they don't want to sign. Okay. Oh. So they still say yes, <gasps> yes, Then, yes, then yes, you yes. bring it back to school and you tell your they teacher. They purposely want you to bring it back to school and tell your teacher that my mother is not happy and hence she doesn't want to sign, okay? <laughs> So but what was the paper that she had to sign? Oh, the marks. The marks, the marks, the marks. Oh, the marks. No. Okay, okay. So I was eight or nine and I realised that she's not making any sense. So I told her, so I thought about this. She didn't want to sign, right? She's making noise about it, right? And I refused to bring it back to school unsigned, right? right? Okay. So I thought about this and I said, but nobody said that you signed to say that you're happy. You signed <sighs> to show that you've seen it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, wow Logical little Azura No but that That makes, makes sense, sense. Yeah, it makes sense that's the reason Of yeah. signing the paper Exactly You exactly. can even yeah. ask her To write I'm not happy I'm not <laughs> like, Just to make the teacher know Sign yeah. but I'm not this happy With the result Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh. So if anyone listening right If yeah. you bring home Your marks to your parents And they're not happy And they don't want to sign Yeah Tell them that you Just it's, say It's not whether it's not or not to, You yeah. like it yeah. yeah You don't have to be happy But don't give it. attitude Yeah I think say it reasonably, <laughs> correct, logically. Correct. Correct. correct they correct. may actually listen. Yeah. Correct. May. Uh, <laughs> may. Yeah, but so is that your advice? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> no. <laughs> That's an example of how I'm a handful. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We that. But I think aside from that, right? Um, if you really want to do something, especially if it's something that you may have to prove yourself for, mm-hmm. I think you need to prepare yourself first of all. And I think you need to have a solid plan. You know, mm, right. yeah. if you present and sort of, you come from a place where they know that you have a plan. You know what you're doing. You've mm. done your research, for example. Yeah. You know the avenues that you're supposed to go to. Yeah. The steps that you're supposed to take. I think they'll be a little bit more assured. Maybe mm. they might still be hesitant until they see some results. Mm. Yeah, that's true. But I think at least there's something, you know. It's not just like, oh, this fella say only. Mm. Yeah. But what actually are you going to do about it? Like this, this you kind of explaining the plans yeah. for yeah. me to mm. like... When I want to right. travel, right. I'll be like, okay, when am I going? I book my ticket. Where am I staying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, who am I going with? Yeah. Here you go, daddy. Can I go travel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bought all of them already. You booked all of them already. There was one time oh. I was supposed to fly and then he kind of got a little bit upset because huh? he was like, what, you're going alone for this work right, trip? Right. But I was like, well, it's a work trip. I have to go. Then, But then he was like, okay, fine, but you need to bring somebody now. Then I was like, okay. Then I called and then we got somebody to fly with me. But right. usually, I'll like kind of like lay it all there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Sign it. <laughs> but but Sign like, it. I feel like it's easier to talk to my mom. Mm. So I'll be like, Mommy, can I go travel? And she's yeah. like, Okay, where are you going to? <laughs> then I'll be like, Oh, maybe LA or South Africa. I can stay with grandma. Like, I'll only be there for 10 days. You know, I'm not going to go anywhere. We have friends over there in South yeah. Africa. Yeah. They'll be like, Okay, when are you going? <laughs> da, 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 da. Who are you going with? Nobody. <laughs> um, have you booked your ticket? I've looked at it. Qatar. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, then just like a week before I, I leave, I'm like, Daddy, I'm going to. <laughs> if I told I my mom so that, right, yeah. she'd be like, "You go ask your daddy." Oh, yeah, immediately go oh, ask your daddy. Your parent yeah. kind of a uh, answer. I'm like, ah, yeah. Why you cannot ask for me? Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever ask her to like huh? tell stuff to your dad? Oh, of course, all the oh, time. Yeah. But it's harder to talk to dad. Yeah, it is. It is, it is. I'm a bit <laughs> like, I'm like. <laughs> When it comes to my dad Okay too, question yeah. like, Question dad. Obviously everybody has An impression of Fandi Ahmad right uh. In their heads right They all think of him A certain way mm-hmm. But growing up with him And you know what people Think of him basically uh-huh. Is he that way at home as well What way Like you know They think he's this like wow, Legendary oh, oh. You know Footballer You know They don't know about You know how Maybe he is at home With his mm. kids for example <laughs> Like Gordon yeah. Ramsay right Always scolding okay. yeah. people Scolding there, right? people Like what are you an idiot sandwich! <laughs> yeah. But then at home, he's like a softie with his daughter doing TikTok dance. TikTok is so cute. Yeah. 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 I mean, okay. No, he is very humble and when mm. it comes to work, he's quite serious. But then, okay, he's the type that's like, Iman, what's that, huh? When, when I have new, like, food, right. he's like, what's that, huh? Uh, grapes. Oh, let me try a bit. <laughs> he's like that kind. And then, um, he'll sing for fun right. in the house. Then he jokes around so much. Right. Like, sometimes he'll, he'll just, like, make a little joke. Then he, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's kind of like a little child ah. at home. But then when he's out, he's like, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But he's like very friendly. Mm. He's easy to talk to. Mm. Like I mean like if you work with him I guess. Yeah. Mm. Um <laughs> uh yeah. So oh. he's very different. And I feel like everybody's kind of like that. Also, mm. you know what I mean? Like when you when you're closer with your friends mm. or family, you're mm. a different way from people you just meet. It's true, mm, it's, yeah. true. it's true. Yeah, I mean, wow. he carries an aura around him. Yeah. Um, that day when you showed him your music video, he, I happened to be standing next mm. to him and asked me like, oh, where can we watch this like on TV? Ah, so cute! I was so intimidated, I called him Sir. <laughs> I said, oh, Sir, you can actually watch it on Channel 5. No, actually on that day, I think he was very nervous. Because oh. he, actually, like with this industry, yeah. I think he's not very, um, I wouldn't say comfortable, I think he's more, because it's not in his, area of it's like you know in comfort yeah. zone you know yeah. so new people but meet all the time <laughs> <laughs> but like when he meets somebody he always needs like somebody next to him that kind of thing because I think he's he's the type of person that likes to be around people that right. he knows mm. so actually that day he was, I felt like he was kind of nervous I could right. tell from his right, face right, right. Oh, yeah especially when we though. were in the green room he was quite nervous yeah. but after that when people started talking to him like hey yeah. this is this this is this, this I do this is this for Iman um, then he's like, oh, okay, nice to meet you. Then that's probably when he felt more comfortable right, so talking right. to you about it. Yeah. <laughs> so here you go, legends are real people too. Mm. They are that's humans true. as well. So yeah. yeah, real people with real feelings. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So real think, problems. Yeah, Iman so. is lucky. La, you know, we are all lucky to, to be able to at least communicate with our parents. Yeah. Um, so last but not least, Jermaine, what advice yeah. do you have for our listeners who are struggling mm. between their parents' choices and their own? I think as you grow up, you will realise that your parents are far from perfect. They yeah. have their own flaws. They may mm. be strong-headed in their own way as well. Mm. And the thing is, I feel like at the end of the day, right, it's about you getting over what people, uh, what people's opinions of you are. Mm. Right. What people, you know, kind of like judge you about. Mm. But that's hard. It's hard. Mm. It's yeah. very difficult. Yeah. Even up till now, I think it's a very hard thing. No matter what age you are, it will be a very yeah. hard thing to just kind of like push it away exactly. but here's the thing mm-hmm. people don't think about you as much as you think they do yeah yep, it's true and right. you know actually that kind of I don't know what's it called but it's like you mustn't think so highly of yourself where you think oh people are thinking about me mm-hmm. that's kind of like the mentality you, where the yeah. world re- revolves about yeah. you that's right. kind of how I am trying to think so that I'm yeah. like eh who cares yeah. that kind of yeah. thing I generally just try to like ignore whenever people like make yeah. judgment mm. about what I'm doing and, and stuff like that you know sometimes you see in forums don't mm. ever google your names guys like you will vomit blood <laughs> no, you will Twitter, vomit blood Twitter is kind of hectic uh, uh, I'm not a, a Twitter apparently like out of Instagram Facebook and like TikTok Twitter is apparently where all the behind the scene happens. Toxic comments? Mm, no. Oh, don't apparently. do it, Iman. Don't do it. Apparently la. Right. This is why I'm not on Twitter. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Good, for oh. You. Good for you. But also, right, okay, so I feel like if anybody's listening right now, and I think we've gotten like really, really good words from Iman today. Mm. And I think, Aww. you know, some people might think like, wow, this girl's 20 and she is so wise, you know. We've yeah. gotten so much from her today. But I also feel like this is because her parents gave her the chance to mm. choose what she wanted to do. True. And I think for a lot of them, you know, you think that by helicoptering around them, right, that you're doing them a favour. But I think when you give them that little room to choose what they want to do, to make choices for themselves and to be responsible for their own actions, I think this is what you get. Yes. You get someone who's able to see the world a little bit wider. <laughs> What? <laughs> no, but yeah, I, agree. Yeah. I feel like um, I mean that explains like a lot of things, yeah. you know. And I feel like when you go through different things, I also realize that I become more independent, mm. more confident. Mm. I used to be super shy. Mm. Right. I would never talk because I'm like, what do I say? But now with like learning about the new industry yeah. and wanting to do different things, yeah. I learn more about myself. Mm. That like, hey, you know what? Just say what you need to say. Yeah. yeah. So I think bottom line. Uh, have more confidence in yourself and the mm-hmm. choices that you make. Of course, also communicate with your parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I hope that this episode has shed some light about how you can uh, carry forward making decisions for yourself. So with that, thank you so much, Iman, for joining us. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Once again, I'm Hazel. I'm Azura. I'm Jermaine. And I'm Iman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Hush. If you have any questions or comments about this episode, feel free to slide into our DM at hello at itsclarity.co That's right and remember the only thing you'll regret is the things that you didn't do. Woo! Wow! Wow. Zura 2021! There we go! Motivational speaker! (laughs)